This is a presentation on neural networks and their use in tumor detection. First off, we're going to give you a neural network overview. What is a neural network? So neural networks are often seen as very complex and difficult to understand, such as the image above. But in actuality, the theory behind them is pretty simple. To emulate the human brain and its neurons. They are machine learning algorithms which are often used for classification or classifying an input such as an image, clustering, grouping like data points together, predictive models, and more. There are three main neural network types, artificial neural networks, ANNs, recurrent neural networks, or RNNs, and convolutional neural networks, CNNs. ANNs are feed-forward, meaning that the data only moves forward and are used when other neural networks are not needed due to it having a lower computational expense than the others. RNNs are essentially ANNs, but include a recursion step that helps it with sequential data such as time series and text. CNNs are also similar to ANNs, but apply a convolution to the input, making them exceptional in image detection. For this presentation, we'll be focusing on CNNs. All neural networks share a few common components, those being neurons and layers. Neurons are cells in the network that receive data, perform calculations, and pass the value further into the network. They can be thought of as elements of a 2D matrix, with the indices being the layer the neuron is located in and the neuron's position within that layer, respectively. Layers are separated columns of neurons, and most layers are classified as either an input, output, or hidden layer. Input layers take an input, such as the grayscale value of a single pixel, and pass on a value to another layer. Output layers receive values from neurons in the previous layer and turn that into an output depending on the problem. In classification problems, the output value is discrete, value representing a class, such as 0 for dog and 1 for cat, and in continuous problems, the output value is usually a decimal between 0 and 1. Neural networks have one input and one output layer, but can have a wide range in the number of hidden layers. These bridge the gap between input and output layers, with each neuron in a hidden layer taking in and outputting values, and many problems can be solved with a single hidden layer, with more being used if the problem is more complex. Convolutions are unique to CNNs, and are 2D arrays of values applied to inputs before they're given to the input layer. These values are multiplied by every value in the input and make what's called a dot product and are especially helpful in image classification. We mentioned that neurons form calculations and these are what enable neural networks to function and learn. The first important piece is to know is the use of weighted values and the subsequent weights assigned. Weights are applied to each connection between neurons and are multiplied to the output of the previous neuron before that product is passed into the next neuron. This allows every neuron to connect to another as weights nearing zero help prevent incorrect associations to counteract that and are a large part of learning as these weights are changed to minimize error. These weighted values are passed by the neuron into the activation function, which performs an equation on the inputs. This equation can vary, but the most common one by far is the sigmoid function, which can be seen above. After the network is run over a training set, a cost function is used to calculate how far away each case is from the correct solution, and this is useful as the cost function is what is minimized during machine learning in order to make the neural network as accurate as possible. Moving on to advantages and disadvantages of neural networks. So the first advantage that we'll discuss is that neural networks can map complex relationships, which in turn can be applied to real-world classification and sometimes regression tasks. A simple task could be classifying whether an email is spam or not, while a more complex task could be predicting the weather based on time series data or classifying tumors based on MRI scans. The second advantage we'll talk about is that there's a multitude of algorithms which can be applied to neural networks, making them suited for a variety of tasks. Nonlinear and complex relationships. Neural networks are much better at inferring hidden relationships between data points than other machine learning systems because each neuron is fed all the information. They can also find and approximate complex relationships and functions, which are very common in the real world. For example, they can classify a complex relationship like how well a certain person can pay back a loan based on a number of factors like age, income, and so on. The function of this loan model is obviously very complex, taking into account many factors but neural networks are able to approximate this function through fine-tuning their parameters and reducing their error rate over time. So variability and multiple algorithms are a vital part of neural networks. There are multiple types of neural networks, each of which has a slightly different purpose. For example, the recurrent neural network can be used for natural language processing and predictive speech because their recurrent connections can help determine dependency between words. There's also many different activation functions and optimization algorithms, all of which help adjust the weights of a neural network to reduce the error produced. Moving on to disadvantages of neural networks. Two main disadvantages are that they're very hardware dependent and their behavior is untraceable, meaning we give the neural network an input, it spits out an output, and we can't interpret what goes on in between. Neural networks are extremely computationally expensive compared to other systems. 
they were very big in the mid to late 20th century, but they were actually unusable until the hardware caught up in the 21st century. Neural networks require processors with parallel processing power, meaning they run on multiple processors, whether it may be a CPU, a central processing unit, a GPU, a graphical processing unit, or even a TPU, a tensor processing unit. Since training neural networks is very energy consuming with many bottlenecks for the number of calculations performed, GPUs and TPUs are better suited for training neural networks rather than CPUs. Neural networks do not allow for probing through their architecture to find errors, meaning we may get issues in error tracing, and they can approximate many complex functions, as previously mentioned, but there's no way to tell how neural networks are approximating those functions, so it ends up being somewhat of a black box. Next, I will be talking about how neural networks can be used in tumor detection. A convolutional neural network is used in image classification and therefore can be used to detect tumors. The convolutional layers have filters which detect patterns in the images, for example, shape, color, brightness, texture, and edges. As you go deeper and further through the network, these filters become more specific and complicated. This picture shows a basic example of filters that can be used to detect edges in an image. Using matrices in which the negative ones correspond to black, the ones correspond to white, and the zeros correspond to gray. Filter 1 highlights the top horizontal edges in white. Filter 2 highlights the left vertical edges, and so on. Before applying the neural network to an image, the dataset of MRI images is augmented in which many variations of the same image are created. This increases the size of the dataset and extends the scope of the neural network. The images are then processed in which they are cropped to only include the area being studied and normalized to make the pixel activation values between 0 and 1. Next, the set of images is divided into three groups, training, which contains the most pictures, validation, and finally testing. The network uses the training set to adjust its weights and lower the loss. Overfitting can occur in which the network gets too comfortable with predicting the training cases that it is unable to correctly predict validation or test cases. Therefore, it is crucial to stop training at a reasonable point. After the neural network has been trained, it is given the validation images in order to see how the network performs with the new images. This gives an unbiased estimate of success. Finally, the network is used on test cases it has never seen before to see its final accuracy. The MRI scan of the area being studied is split into multiple slides as shown. This is because the image contains billions of pixels and the neural network isn't trained to look at that large of an area. The network takes a section of the image in as input along with the activations of each pixel based on the grayscale color. It outputs a zero if it estimates a benign tumor is present or a one if it is malignant. If the network doesn't return the correct output for a certain image, it has to be trained. The neural network's training consists of a loss function in which false positives, prediction of a malignant tumor when none is there, and false negatives, prediction of a benign tumor when a malignant one is present, are penalized. During training, the parameters or weights of the network are updated so that the loss is decreased. This is done using a corrective feedback loop. First, the network makes an estimate about the image, benign or malignant, using filters which detect the grayscale color and the weights assigned to the pixels. The network then compares the real answer with the estimate and calculates the error, as shown by the second equation. Finally, the network adjusts the weights based on how much they contributed to the error. Weights that support the real answer are rewarded, while weights that lead to error are punished. Training is over when the error is below some threshold value parameter or when the error stops decreasing. So now we're going to talk about some real-world examples of neural networks being used in tumor detection. Currently, the most popular and researched use for CNNs in tumor detection is specifically in brain tumor detection. Brain tumors have the potential to be extremely dangerous, and therefore having early and accurate detection methods is important. As we described earlier, neural networks, when trained with data, can analyze MRI images and diagnose tumors quickly and efficiently. This reduces the amount of time it takes for a diagnosis and limits the possibility of human error. 
Many studies and tests have been done with convolutional neural networks typically resulting in a high diagnostic accuracy. In some cases, they determine if brain tumors are benign or malignant, and in others, they can actually classify the brain tumors into different categories. For example, in the lower diagram, the network classifies the tumor as meningioma, glioma, or pituitary. In one recent study, a convolutional neural network was trained with images of common brain tumor types. Two samples were taken from each patient. One was processed normally and sent to a pathologist for diagnosis, while the other was photographed with new imaging technology and given to the neural network. The results, as you can see on the slide, showed that the neural network method was actually slightly more accurate than the regular diagnosis. In this same study, with a combination of neural networks and advanced imaging techniques, the researchers were able to accurately diagnose brain tumors in less than three minutes. Many research teams in this field are aiming to design a method that can classify and accurately locate a tumor in real time during brain surgery, so this study proved that using CNNs to detect the tumors was a good approach. CNNs are also being introduced as a method of analyzing mammogram images to diagnose breast tumors. It's vital to discover and diagnose breast cancer early because there are more treatment options and a higher chance of recovery. Traditional methods of diagnosis are often time consuming. For example, the image segmentation step shown in the diagram would have to be done manually each time for the classical method of diagnosis with the pathologist. Therefore, there is a need for efficient methods that diagnose the cancerous cells without human involvement that still result in high accuracies. This is where the use of neural networks comes in. A CNN would automatically do that segmentation step, like the splitting of the MRI image we described before. Multiple studies have been performed showing that using CNNs for breast mass classification can potentially result in an earlier and more accurate tumor detection process. Similarly to the previous two, the earlier prostate cancer is detected, the better it is for a patient. Additionally, radiologists sometimes have issues properly detecting prostate cancer due to the complexity of the masses. CNNs, which can detect tumors faster than regular methods and can be trained to analyze complex images, can be very useful in this area. The idea of using CNNs for prostate tumor detection and classification is still being developed and tested, so there isn't as much research that has already been completed on the subject. However, in initial studies that have already been published, CNNs have had promising results with high diagnostic accuracies. In general, CNNs have been proven to be efficient and accurate when used for tumor detection and are a great example of how computation is really useful in modern biology. Thanks for watching and we hope that was helpful.